Okay, so we're recording now. Um, I'm just going to minimize the chat box. Good. Okay, so um, I'll start very much at the beginning, just with a brief explanation of what 360 is, um, because we're focusing on 360 for this uh, this presentation. Um, 360 is a way of um, mailing your customers with um, bookie um, emails um built from information that your pos system is already supplying to edelweiss um so uh your entire stock um also your ordering so if you've got lots of books that you've you know you've got a pile of uh you know the latest uh, jk rowling for instance that you uh want to push out to your customers um, Adavice knows that you've got lots of those um, either on order or in stock um, and can kind of they'll put them to the front of your possible selections but you can also what one thing I like doing is going through uh, the new publisher catalogs that are all on Adavice well all the publishers that are signed up are on Adavice going through the catalogue and picking out the titles that you think oh yeah my customers are really going to love that and just adding them to a mailing as well um it, the the 360 integration with the bookshop.org um comes by uh, cleverly linking your um uh, your bookshop.org um account um and the ISBN um to the mailing um and that's what i'm going to show you how to do um but also how to show how to create interesting lists from uh, from collections that you've made or from the catalogues that you've got um, or your own analytics. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is show you how to configure your um, 360 um, setup so that it can, uh, it links through to bookshop.org. So um, in your analytics or your Edelweiss login, you should all have this 360 icon up at the top. So what we'll want to do first of all is click on 360 and that will open up the 360 um, application. Okay, so you can see the URL has changed to Indy360. Um, my internet seems to have slowed down handily, um, but the Indy360 um, page will open up here. This is uh, typical, uh, just bear with me a moment. Again, sorry about this, my internet is normally fine. Let's try that again. Don't know whether the, um, the presentation might be slowing things down a bit. Um, okay. While that is thinking about that, I am going to go back to Edelweiss and show you something else. Okay, so um, <laughs> I don't know why that's being so slow. Uh, right, okay, what I, ah, there we go, it's loaded. Perfect. Okay, so this is the 360 um, uh, part of Edelweiss. Now it's split into uh, the campaigns that you haven't sent yet at the top, your completed campaigns um, in this middle bit, which expands out. It doesn't load it automatically, but I can expand out my previous mailings and have a look at the statistics on those mailings. So how many got delivered, how many people opened them, how many clicked uh, converts. Uh, so that's people who bought the things that you were mailing about, um, people that bought things related to the things that you mailed out, how many people came into the shop after the mailing. Now it knows this information because I do loyalty cards with uh, Batchline. Um, and um, so I know who's come into my shop. Um, based on that information. Um, but it will still have all the other bits, uh, deliveries, opens, clicks. Um, if your customer has phoned up and ordered and you've used your system to 
uh, place a customer order, it will also know that as well. It's the loyalty card means I know everything about everybody. Um, so yeah, Big Brother is watching on that one. Uh, and then further down, this is where your analytics links in. So it knows- no, my... I can't see the screen anymore. Oh, okay. I did wonder whether that might've happened. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. Thank you for letting me know that. That could have gone on for a long time. Okay, so can you see my screen again? Yep, perfect, thanks. Thank you, good. Okay, so when Adelweiss 360 loads, this is your, your main screen. So as I was saying, splits into your active uh, campaigns that you haven't sent yet, um, your completed campaigns with all the statistics I was talking about uh, there, and then you've got the analytics side of things. So things that you've got lots of copies on order um, that aren't yet published, um, things that you've got um, lots of copies in stock of, um, and then things that are selling really well in the, in the shop as well. Um, and then I've got all my staff reviews as well. Staff reviews are really worth uh, starting to do um, if you're not doing them already, because you can use them in mailings and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so, just to plow straight into some of the settings along the top bar. Um, first of all, a device 360 will always get you back to this screen. Uh, the plus will take you back out into your uh, main a device website. Um, home will just take you uh, back to this screen again. Cog is your preferences and that's where we want to be in order to start setting up bookshop.org. So I've gone into preferences. Now, if you've never done anything in here, and most of you, um, particularly if you're Batchline or Guardlink, will already have had this part set up by one of my colleagues here. Um, we can go into template temp um, uh, email template settings. Um, and you should have your bookshop name in there, the um, email address that you want uh, people to reply to, and then some defaults for the email template. So um, the titles you might like, the default on that is normally um, upcoming titles you might like, but I'm, I don't want to I don't want to imply that they're just upcoming, that, you know, I could be mailing about anything. Upcoming events that are recommended for you. That's quite a nice uh, thing to include in your mailing. If you're doing any events, particularly online events, you can link your online events to, um, to Edelweiss. Um, and I'll show, I can show you that as well, because we'll be going into that section. Um, collection. So this is just text that will appear on the, on the mailing as a default. Now it's worth remembering to always click save after you've made made a change because it won't it won't save it um, uh, just by, by just by changing it and then exiting. You, you need to remember to save. Uh, so um, just if we go down to the uh, contact um, section, this is where you would fill in your own details for your own shop. Again, all of you should have this filled in already um, if you were on the list of batch line and, and Guardlink users. Um, so most of these details will have been taken from your account. Um, uh, my colleague also will have sent you like a test email to say, uh, to, to show you what the potential is. So that may have gone into your uh, email if you've uh, received it or not. Um, okay. Again, remember to save when you've made changes. Now, this is the clever bit um, with um, links. So we're in the links preferences section. Um, the top one is how it links to your titles, either on your website um, or on bookshop.org. Now, if you want it to link to bookshop.org, which is what this is all about today, so uh, that's what I'm showing you. This is basically the format that you need. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash UK dot bookshop dot org forward slash A forward slash. Now, don't put seven on yours. Uh, you want your own affiliate number um, from bookshop dot org. And I'll show you how to get that in a minute. 
uh, just the very end of the uh, of the URL is forward slash and then curly brackets SKU in lowercase curly brackets. It's, it's important you get the case right, um, because it, it, if you had app capitals in there, it wouldn't work. So to find your affiliate number, let's find uh, somebody else's affiliate number, I think. So uh, actually, no, if we go to uh, profile at the top um, and if you go to uh, affiliate dashboard, there is your affiliate number. OK, so I'm seven. Um, <laughs> I hope that's a lucky number seven. Uh, yours will be a different number. Just uh, make a note of that number. And um, sorry, just uh, the uh, Zoom has got in the way a little bit. Um, there we go. And put your affiliate number in there. Click save and that will be done. OK, uh, now you can use um, your own website for these other links. Um, now, what I do is when I've got an event coming up, um, I, um, I basically put it in as a product on my website. So this is how WooCommerce sort of formats it. Um, and then you can have event key. Uh, so it's lowercase event, uppercase K, lowercase EY in there. Um, and that then says um, link to the event and I'll show you where to put the event key in. Uh, your contact page, again, if you don't have a website at all, what you would probably want to do is link to your main page. So I'm just going to copy this out because hopefully on your main page, you will have contact details uh, set up on there. I haven't done that on there. on there. What I want people to do is go back to my website and find that information out from there. So that's why I haven't done that. But if you don't have a website at all and you're relying solely on uh, Bookshop, then you will want to, instead of having your contact page from your website, you want to put https colon forward slash forward slash uk dot bookshop dot org forward slash shop forward slash and then your uh, shops page there. So to get to that, uh, well, I just clicked on there, but you can also go to profile again, view my shop and we're back in the same place. So just copy that. So highlight it, right click, copy and then paste it into uh, into here. Okay, remember to click save afterwards. Okay. Uh, and then I've got the same here for the browse section. So um, that again is linking to bookshop.org. Again, you might want to direct people to your website instead. Um, and then again, for the search, it just goes to the main bookshop.org page. Uh, then um, that's it. You are ready to start sending your mailing. So to get out of this section, if we just click on 360 again, um, you can see for the video that I made, I, I already set up a mailing. Um, now I'm going to create a new one so that we, we, we're starting um, as if you were starting it. So we've got this button up here to create a campaign. OK, and let's call it a uh, book shop org two oh. <clears throat> and click create so you can see my new campaign is created in there uh, it was created today i've got no titles in it no events linked to it and um no collections a collection is like a catalog um so think of it like a catalog but it can be your own catalog so say there's a whole bunch of books that you absolutely love and you want to create a collection from it and you can mail them out to people and things. Um, that would be, um, uh, yeah, a, 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 like a catalog you can attach to the mailing. Uh, so, and you can also see I've got no customers um, in here at the moment assigned to this mailing. So I'm gonna go into bookshop.org2 or bookshop.org2 uh, just by clicking on the blue name and now I'm going to want to add some books to my mailing. OK, so you can add books to a mailing from lots of different places in Adavice, from the catalogues, from uh, from your list of your own stock. Um, 
and you can do that. So, so if you're just adding a single title, we can click up here and say, I want to add in heart and it's my favorite picture book, heart in the bottle. I can just search for it and there it is. And that, if, if that was all you wanted to do, that's there and, and ready. If I go into preview, I've got one book in my mailing and this, if I added some customers would be ready to send. Uh, it wouldn't be a very interesting mailing, but what you can see is the fact I've added this book. If I click on view, it goes straight into bookshop.org, um, the book, the ISBN, it knows everything there and it's affiliated to my account. So if the customer then purchases, you're gonna get the 30% from that. Okay, so, that's not a very interesting mailing. Um, what we can do is add a bit more to it. So campaign title blurbs, actually let's work from the top. Subject, um, let's say we're doing, we are on bookshop.org um, as our subject line. Look, you could do whatever you like, but, but seeing as this is all about bookshop.org, uh, that's what I'm going to put in the subject line. Again, remember to save. Okay. Now, once you've put a subject line in, you can send a preview to yourself um, just to check out what it looks like. It's always worth doing that before you send it to everybody, just to make sure it looks okay from uh, from a reader's perspective. And maybe send it around colleagues and just say, you know, do you think this looks okay? Are there any typos in it? Anything like that. Um, so the message is the, the content of your email, what you want to talk about. So let's click on edit there. Um, so once you've clicked on edit on the message, you get the campaign message editor there. And this is just like using Word um, or um, yeah, any other kind of word processor type thing. Um, so you can uh, start it off with a hello. A lovely customers. Um, we have an exciting announcement uh, to make. Um, we are now, uh, hang on. You can now browse and purchase books directly through, directly through sorry um bookshop.org if you click on any of these titles or and now i'm going to put this in uh so this is my shop on bookshop.org and i'm going to highlight that and create that as a link paste in my link. So this, this button here lets you make a link out of any word. If I click save there or tick there. So now that will link, that will also link people through to your site so they can browse all of the books, but you will get the 30% or uh, correct my typo. Um, then oh, it's still linking. Let's unlink that. So mm -mm, let's that. Uh, then we will benefit from your book buying. I, I've actually removed the hyperlink from there, so I'm going to put it back in again. Uh, there we go. That's very quickly. Um, uh, I hope you are well. Uh, the book bugs team. There we go. Okay, so if I save and stop editing, I'm sure there was a typo in there. Benefit font. There we go. Let's remove that typo. Save and stop editing. And as soon as you do that, you will see in the preview 
we've got a bit of text in there. Now you might want to make that a lot longer and include, um, you know, other th details about what you're doing during lockdown or, you know, beyond that, what, uh, you know, events that you might be excited about or new books that you might be excited about that you want to talk about specifically. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm in a rush, obviously, so I don't want to sit there and do a whole mailing. Uh, now, um, so the next bit down, so we've done a message. If we click on campaign title blurbs, this is where you can pick up your reviews for books. Um, now, I've only got one book in there and I've got no blurb. Now, if I want to add a blurb, I have a staff review that I can use. Um, if I just want to do a custom blurb, so on the fly, then I can do that. What it doesn't do is put a picture of me on there, which I quite like. Oh no, actually Leanne uh, reviewed this one. Um, so we are gonna select this staff review. Okay, and that's now active. And what you see is it changes the format of the mailing to include the entire review that she made on that book. Um, if we scroll back up to reviews and instead of that one, we go to custom blurb and we put something like we love this book oh we love this book and save that what you will see now is instead of leanne's face and the long review it's the review that or the blurb that we've just put on there okay um now the other option in here is a publisher supplied review. Um, so you can, if the publisher has added a review that is available to the community, um, you'll be able to use that instead. Uh, the other thing that you can do is copy and paste uh, like the bibliographic details from, uh, from your website or from Nielsen if you're on Nielsen um, and just paste that in there as well. That works um, as a custom blurb. Uh, so there we go. We've got a mailing. Um, we've got some content to it. Now, what we can also do is change things on the fly um, about the mailing. So like the logos and things like that. So if I expand this next portion out, that's where we can change the settings. So you have your default settings, your from email address, your from reply address, but you can change them for this mailing if you want to. And then that won't change it forever. It will just be for this one. Um, so you might want to type, look, uh, so these are previous ones that I've typed in here. Oliver, other Oliver Jeffers titles. There we go. I'll use that one. Um, so it now, instead of um, titles you might like, it says Oliver Jeffers titles. Um, I So the default on your view is actually buy normally. Um, I don't like having buy on there because I just feel like it makes it into more of a selly email and, and I prefer people to think that I'm not <laughs> selling them things. I think that's seller's guilt, um, but you can change it back to buy if you want to um, or change it to view if it is set to buy or change it to something else. Uh, like, I don't know, have a look. Uh, so I've done that, have a look. You can change, so you can change it to whatever you like. Pre-order will only appear when the book isn't yet published, okay? So you can change that to pre-order or just to view again if you want to. Um, uh, yeah, so that's what that does. Now upload email splash image will let you pick an image. Let's choose any old image. Uh, there you go, there's me as Captain Canary. <laughs> Uh, you can crop that image. This is going to make a very spooky um, image. Bit of fun though. So there you can see I've got now got an image at the top of my mailing. Um, so that is all you need to do in order to do your mailing about bookshop.org. Um, However, you're going to want some people to actually email to. Now, again, if you're on um, Batchline's loyalty card system, 
um, you will be able to use the email addresses that your customer gave you um, if you take them when you sign them up to loyalty. It's a perfect time to sign people, to get people's email addresses because they expect to have to give something back for a loyalty scheme. Um, so that's what we do. And I can just go into add customers, all active, and then all of my people with uh, email addresses um, become recipients. And now if I go into preview, I've got an option to send to my 2,600 customers. It will give you a, a like a second confirmation afterwards. It will say, uh, are you sure you want to do this? Um, now there are also options um, to, um, if I do add customers, to exclude people that you've recently emailed. So if you don't want to um, send an email today, and then tomorrow and you know the same people get the same one then you can exclude the recently and when you do that you get the option don't include people for the last seven days i can click on this and change it to 30 say and then look my number of recipients has gone down quite dramatically okay now very quickly what i want to do is show you how to get your mailchimp customers in um, because that's what you'll need to do if you're on MailChimp or another emailing program. Um, so I am going to go into my MailChimp. Uh, no, I'm not. That's not MailChimp. Just show you how to get your emails out of there. Bear with me. In. Oh, I just need to do a verification number. Bear with me. Okay, so once you're in MailChimp, if you go to um, Close that down. If you go to all your contacts, okay, um, I have 1,964 subscribers, so I can go to them. I can export the segment. Okay. And that will then give me a spreadsheet. If I tick this, uh, export as CSV. Okay, it goes into a zip file. And what you can do then um, is just take your subscribed people and put them somewhere you can find them somewhere up here. Okay, so I've just copied what MailChimp has given me and put it somewhere I know I can find it. Now, all you need to do in Edelweiss, down here, so your numbers, if if you don't have loyalty cards, your numbers will all be zero on here, but you can click here to add your customers. Okay, you can do one at a time if you wanted to, um, and that's perfectly valid, but it's better to come from a spreadsheet. It'll save you a lot of work. So we're clicking down the bottom section. We're going into uh, the place that you saved them. I'm just going to sort by modified. Um, there we go. Subscribed members. Open. Okay. And what it will give you then is all your email addresses and your names from MailChimp. You can then link up the um, uh, the email addresses. So that's my email column. So I've selected email there. I can do my first name and my last name. And then at the bottom here, so I don't need to worry about any of the other stuff. I can click upload and then uh, all those customers will be created in my um, Adobe 360. I'm not going to actually upload them because I've already got those people already in there. Okay, so um, 
I just I'll show you one quick trick for getting other books into your mailing. So I've done it from um, being in here and searching for the title. If I want to add Cat Kid to my mailing, my Oliver Jeffers mailing, I can click on Cat Kid. It will load the title in a second. And this is actually a good location to get the additional blurb if you wanted to um, about the book instead of having to write your own review. So down here, you've got the descriptive content. I'm just going to copy all of that. Um, but to add it to your campaign, click on add to campaign. There's my bookshop org campaign. And over here is a message saying it's successfully added. OK, I can click back into here just to show you it's added it if i go into my preview and i go to my campaign title blurbs um i've got no blurb on cat kid but if i do a custom blurb and paste what i just copied and save that you'll see i now have two titles with blurbs okay so you can make quite an attractive looking mailing just using a few little tricks like that um, the other way uh, to add titles is back in Edelweiss. If you want to look at a catalogue, for instance, um, say we want to look at the Christmas catalogue. And we want to shout about just the Christmas titles. Wherever you're looking at a catalogue, you've got add to campaign over here. So I can add this to my bookshop.org campaign. And you can go down this list of great books, picking out the ones you think your customers are going to love, okay? Um, while you're here, you can also do the review as well. Um, I haven't read Mirror and the Light, but I can do my review. Click on the review down here, add in some text about it, and then that will appear, okay? Um, I'm not gonna do that. OK, so the next thing, um, has anyone got any questions that I've missed at the moment? Um, you can come off mute if you want to and um, uh, and we can talk about them or um, or I'll plough on with um, uh, with the next bit. Right. No one's saying anything, so I'm, I'm assuming we can plough on. Um, uh, well, one thing I should have said is you can also search for titles up here. So uh, if we search for, say, 10 Little, what this will do is uh, search the entire world of books as opposed to what you've got in stock. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's um, it's a good way of finding lots more books. OK, so from here, I'm not going to do the World Book Day one, 10 Little Aliens. I can go into this, add it to a campaign, add to campaign, you have to excuse my phone, sorry about that. Uh, so next thing I'm going to talk about um, is an easy way to create um, a, a list of your, you know, your 50 lists on bookshop.org. So um, the best way I've found to do that is in analytics. Okay. Um, so this is my shop's analytics and what I can do from here is I can say look at my really well selling books in my shop. Um, I can set my top my limit of titles to 50 because that's all bookshop.org wants um, in, a, in their lists. By doing that to do that you click on the cog in the top left on the popular titles uh, row and you can change the number of titles. Yours will probably be set to 500 or 200. If you limit it to 50, then you know that the list you're getting is compatible with bookshop.org. So set it to 50. Your time frame, you might not just want the current month, and especially as lockdown progresses, sales are not going to be as good. Uh, so you might want to go, say, three months back instead of just the one month. So I've clicked away from there. Uh, so there are the top 50 selling books in the last three months across all indies in the UK and Ireland um, that are on Edelweiss. Um, 
now you if you just want your top selling ones uh, in relation to the world's top shop top selling ones then you can just click on your fresh ones and you'll get a slightly different list in there okay um now to get that list onto bookshop.org all you need to do is view the titles in a grid okay and there we have the list in order of best selling if you tick on this top tick it will highlight all of them okay um, then if you go to other actions and uh, export to file now i've set myself up a custom export that just exports isbn's as you can see there just isbn for you to do that you just need to go into custom exports okay um, and create yourself a new one uh, let's call it just isbn's 2 um, and save and then you can edit that export using the edit button and take out fields that you don't want so for bookshop.org all we need is the isbn EAN in this instance same thing click save okay we're back to this screen and in a moment just ISBNs 2 would appear there um, it does take a, a like a, a few minutes to show up so I'm not going to wait for it you highlight your report that you've created you click on create and that will go into your downloads folder from Google uh, we don't need to look at it. We can go straight into uh, your book bugs, your, sorry, your login. Um, you can go into your profile, affiliate profiles and lists. Scroll down and there are your lists that we've already got. We can click on manage, create a new book list, give it a title. Uh, let's call it uh, Book Bugs Best Sellers. Uh, we can give a little description. These are some of our top selling books. Um, and then upload CSV, go to your downloads. And there should just check the date is, you know, you've got it sorted by date and it's the one that you've just created. Click on open. Um, when we click save, it will create the list. OK, and it will give you a warning at the top if any have failed to import. Um, in this case, they're all books that everybody should have so you should be absolutely fine um, so yeah that is the list if we click on view list um, there I love the way it creates this sort of banner for you um, and there are all the books all added in now that's a really simple list of your best-selling ones what you might want to do is use some of these filters along the side um, to get a different kind of list because you don't want everybody having the same list. So, you know, you may uh, be particularly strong in uh, economics, for instance. So if we highlight economics, uh, we now get, you can see we don't do a great deal in economics. Um, if we show all 50, so that's just showing the ones I did have. If we show all 50, here's some economics books. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to do this. We tick the tick. Um, so I've I've shown titles in grid. We've ticked the tick. Other actions. Um, export to file. Uh, highlight just ISBN. Create into your orders. Uh, sorry, into your downloads. Back onto bookshop.org. Uh, uh, and let's go back into lists, add a list. 
Um, I'm going to rename this. I can't think. E economics. Um, I'm not going to do anything more fancy than upload the CSV. There it is. Open. Save. Again, it will give you a warning if any didn't go. There you go. There's one that it didn't find. Um, but otherwise, the other 49 have gone in. And then we can scroll down, view list, and there's my economics list. Quite uh, quick and easy to do. Now you can get even more fancy with it with using multiple um, uh, multiple filters. Uh, so we could say um, from a particular publisher, for instance, let's look at show my lack of uh, what publishers do. Uh, let's look at Walker Books Economics, there are none in there. But you can filter basically um, by publisher as well as big subject. Now in each of these drop downs will be even more details on economics uh, or uh, the one I like to do actually. Let's take this filter off and that filter off. Um, and um, if we go into um, uh, fiction, 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 and down here you have graphic novels. There we go. I like doing this one because, oh, let's, I've got too many refinements on there. Graphic novels. Yeah, if you want to remove a filter really quickly, You've got this little button up here to remove. OK, um, so so, yes, you've got a list here now. Um, you Yeah, you can basically do the same thing with that. So I've got graphic novels. I've got my top 50 other actions and I can export them. OK, now, maybe like so for this one, for instance, I might not want all the Tintin books in there. I might want some more um, radical uh, sort of grown up um, uh, uh, graphic novels to have in there instead. So you, what you can do, instead of ticking everything, you can just go through the list uh, and pick, tick the ones that you want to highlight like that. And then when you go to other actions, export, it will, um, it will just export those ones. Uh, let's pick another one. There we go, Animal Farm. Uh, yes, so that's another way of doing it as well. Um, so another thing you could do um, if you wanted to is you could export an order to a list. So from your orders section, uh, we could, if we've got any books uh, yet, so we've got, say, our pre-order section. This will, I could highlight all of these books and export that and put that into a list. Um, back into analytics, the not yet published one is quite a good one to do because uh, not everybody will have sight of things that are coming up or, you know, be able to get the list generated quite as easily as this. Um, just to explain, the titles you'll see in here are the books that are being most pre-ordered by other independent bookshops. So there should be quite a strong list of titles in there. Um, and that's one list that I create on our on our section as well. Um, yeah, so there are just some ways in which to create, uh, create your lists. Um, has anyone got any questions about that side of things? I'm going to stop sharing for now. Let's see if there's anything in the chat. Nothing in the chat. So, um, yes, if nobody has any questions, then I think that that is the presentation um, over with. Dan, can I ask you? Yes. Um, I've not used Idlewise at all. No. And not used the bootshop.org at all. Okay. Yet. Yeah. So, um, I was writing as fast as I could there, but um, <laughs> there's a, a kind of whistle stop tour. Yeah. Um, is there any tutorials um, or 
how, how should I go up to speed? There, on, are, on, there on are loads and loads of tutorial and help documents on Edelweiss. Um, do you do you use a bookshop system? Do you use Batchline or Guardlink? Guardlink. You use Guardlink. So yeah. um, we we'll do. We, we'll ask if you want to be on Edelweiss. We'll ask um, them to put you live on sending your data. Um, and that way um, you'll be able to see that analytics tab and your 360 portion will make a lot of sense as well. So I'll, I'll contact you after this, if you like. And um, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Thanks, man. Good stuff. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. In that case, I shall stop recording. Uh, thank you so much for those that turned up. Thank you for those that are watching after the event. Um, and I'm on Bookseller Network or Contactable. Matt, you were going to say something? Yeah. Well, I, I was actually. I, obviously, um, we've come at this from a slightly different angle, but it's really yeah. interesting. You know, thank you very much. It's interesting. Not a problem um, at all. I, I think it's Ruth. I see Ruth's on the call. Um, yeah. Yes. We, we had a, I mean, as a publisher, we, we have had discussions with, um, Edelweiss in the past. I just wondered who we should really talk to about carrying on those discussions. Um, um, yeah. You know, how we get involved. Yeah, talk to me. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> what I'll do probably, Ruth, is I'll drop you um, I'll drop you an email and we perhaps should arrange a call. Yeah, that'd be terrific. Yeah. Great. Yeah, but thank you very much. It's very, you know, it's, it's interesting to see what the shop can do. Yeah, good. It's very uh, useful and how uh, we can potentially yeah. get involved. Yeah. Good enough. Excellent. Okay. Well, goodbye, everyone. And uh, we'll be covering some more um, aspects of Edelweiss next week as well. Um, same time. Um, so tune in or you can watch again. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.